Good morning, I'm Mehdi Razavi. I'm one of the electrophysiologists here at uh, Texas Heart Institute. I will be discussing the role of the left atrial appendage in arrhythmogenesis, specifically geared towards atrial fibrillation. Here are my disclosures. And so the first question that we have to keep in mind is when we're talking about atrial fibrillation, as we know, it's not a single disease. And so as the spectrum of paroxysmal AFib, which is uh, uh, mostly a trigger-driven uh, arrhythmia, as it evolves with substrate changes, calcification, fibrosis, changes in the ion channels um, in terms of uh, their ability to conduct uh, potassium, calcium, there's an acute remodeling and then a more st chronic structural remodeling that occurs and it turns a trigger-driven uh, disease process more into a substrate-driven uh, disease process. And this is what makes challenging the ablation of persistent atrial fibrillation. And uh, this is what we're going to focus on um, for the rest of this talk, to see if isolation of the left atrial, electrical isolation of the left atrial appendage, in fact, can decrease the incidence of persistent and permanent atrial fibrillation. So, first of all, there is no doubt that the left atrial appendage can be a trigger for atrial fibrillation. A number of studies have shown that isolation of the appendage can in specific cases lead to elimination of arrhythmia and that the left atrial appendage is actually contributing to a not insignificant number of uh, episodes of atrial fibrillation. This is a somewhat uh, biased uh, population uh, in which we see the 27% uh, redo procedures. Uh, of course, by, by the fact that the pulmonary veins have already been isolated, we're kind of increasing the percentages for other locations. But nonetheless, this is a number that's worth um, keeping in mind, about a quarter of the post-ablation failures, initial ablation failures, indeed will have um, uh, the left atrial appendage as the trigger. Um, in terms of arrhythmogenesis and more specific numbers, you can have non-pulmonary um, triggers that occur in the left atrial appendage, but also in the vein of Marshall and the ligament of Marshall. Um, and these areas are also uh, abutting the left atrial appendage. And so at times, uh, isolation and ablation at the base of the left atrial uh, appendage, in fact, may be potentially associated, therefore, with increased treatment and efficacy of ablation of atrial fibrillation. And some studies have looked at this. Uh, the, the, the key question is, how do you isolate the left atrial appendage? Are you doing a structural isolation? Or are you doing an electrical isolation? And in terms of electrical isolation, there have been concerns about the incidence of stroke uh, after uh, isolating the left atrial appendage. Uh, the isolation of the left atrial appendage can lead to atrial appendage standstill, and this can be more um, arrhythmogenic. And I, in my practice, I certainly will maintain these patients on life-flowing anticoagulation unless they have uh, their left atrial appendage uh, closed. So, Electrical isolation is probably not your best bet. Um, the mechanical isolation and essentially a left atrial appendage exclusion, that is actually another potential option. In this case, you're not just doing an electrical debulking, you're doing a mechanical debulking. You are isolating both electrically and essentially physically the left atrial appendage uh, to a point where it eventually atrophies and sloughs off over the course of time. Um, and so this, in terms of a, a true isolation of the left atrial appendage, that is obviously the most surefire way of demonstrating an isolation, just eliminating the entire left atrial appendage altogether. We also know that after uh, ablation, you can have um, a, a number of episodes of atrial fibrillation, as we touched upon earlier, but you can also have triggers for atrial tachycardias and flutters at the base or at the stump of the left atrial appendage. And so this, again, brings up the question in these patients who perhaps have failed their first um, standard pulmonary vein isolation ablation in the setting of persistent or permanent atrial fibrillation, should isolation of the left atrial appendage be performed and or will that be safe and or effective? Um, so it has been shown that in some 
couple of, in a few studies actually, uh, that with increased ablation um, and um, isolation of the left atrial appendage, you have a lower incidence of atrial fibrillation, and they did not in the study have any increase in complications, uh, despite the increased, uh, despite isolating the left atrial appendage. And you can see here that there was a uh, freedom, uh, higher incidence of freedom from arrhythmia in this population that had the left atrial appendage isolated as opposed to the ones that did not, all things being equal. There were a couple of other trials also looking at this. Chief amongst these uh, was the Converge trial, which is a, a hybrid of a surgical and a catheter based uh, ablation. And in that situation, you also have uh, 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 lesion sets and in, some, in these patients, isolation of the left atrial appendage. And what you can see is that under all circumstances, um, the 12-month outcomes are better in those patients who had left the left atrial appendage ablation was done um, versus endocardial ablation uh, alone. This, all of this points to the fact, honestly, that sometimes just ablating more and more tissue is potentially going to get you uh, to your endpoint. So we have to take everything here um, with a grain of salt. And at this point, a randomized trial is, was essentially the most uh, definitive way of um, figuring out whether or not this is going to work. Isolating the left atrial appendage will work. And so we have the AMAZE trial. In the AMAZE trial, you took patients with persistent permanent atrial fibrillation. You randomized them to isolation and standard ablation alone versus standard ablation with left atrial appendage closure and ligation um, uh, using the um, uh, lariat. Uh, the, the question was whether or not patients who had also the left atrial appendage mechanically excluded, if they have a low, would they have a lower incidence of atrial fibrillation? Again, this is a population that is persistent, longstanding, persistent, or permanent atrial fibrillation. So the primary efficacy point uh, was freedom from documented atrial arrhythmias at 12 months, um, and the rest of it was essentially standard in terms of the follow-up uh, monitoring of these uh, patients. Uh, 610 total patients were uh, enrolled in this uh, study, and the uh, national PIs were uh, David Wilbur, DJ Lacaretti in Kansas City, and the findings are as follows. The 30-day post-lariat primary safety endpoint rate was 3.4% uh, with a confidence interval of 2.0 to 5.0. There was a very successful um, and high incidence of left atrial appendage closure in those patients who uh, were randomized to the lariat uh, at 12 months after the uh, index ablation procedure. Uh, freedom for antiarrhythmic drugs at 12 months post PV ablation alone was 64.3%. In the lariat plus PVI group, it was 59.9%. Um, and this, uh, this uh, did not necessarily achieve statistical um, uh, significance. Thus, adjunctive left atrial ligation was not superior to PV ablation alone in reducing recurrent atrial arrhythmias in the overall persistent AFib population uh, undergoing initial AFib ablation. These were not redo ablations. That was an exclusion for these uh, patients. Uh, so unfortunately, it turns out that the study's primary endpoint was negative. However, a pre-specified, again, I am emphasized pre-specified exploratory analysis showed that the subgroup with early persistent AFib and larger uh, left atrial volumes, adjunctive left atrial ligation may, may pro uh, provide improved rhythm control. So in essence, what you have is you have a situation where if you look on the x-axis here, you're looking at left atrial volumes. And you can see that the probability of success uh, as the left atrial volumes increases significantly drops in the case of those patients who just received the, P, uh, the uh, standard ablation with pulmonary vein isolation. However, in the patients who had the standard ablation plus the lariat, regardless of the left atrial volume and its index, you had an equivalent success rate. Therefore, there was not a diminution of the overall success rate of the procedure um, as left atrial volumes increase. And this suggests uh, potentially that we ought to consider reserving this hybrid uh, approach in those patients who have 
uh, larger left atrial uh, volumes. A left atrial volume, again, analysis found that those patients having the highest tercile of, uh, of left atrial volume had the best response in terms of an increment benefit and demonstrating an increment benefit with uh, left atrial appendage isolation uh, versus ablation and uh, LAA exclusion. You can see that if you do an analysis and you look at a number of um, uh, outcomes in terms of probability of success uh, across different patient populations, early persistent, persistent populations, and amazed populations, you can see that the uniformal finding remains clear. The red PVI only, as the volume goes up to the right on the x-axis, you see on the y-axis the probability of success comes down. Whereas you have an almost horizontal line, almost, in those patients who had the lariat and the PVIs um, performed together. Uh, in other words, the left it, the isolation of the left atrial appendage mitigates the effects of having a larger left atrium, essentially because you're mechanically debulking uh, that tissue. And that's suggestive of, of that benefit. You see that these patients um, were quite, you know, quite similar and um, in, in the course of the randomization as can be, um, as, as can be expected. So what's the take home message? The, the most important message here is to keep in mind is that obviously the primary endpoint of the AMAZE trial was negative. We did not have decreased incidence in atrial fibrillation uh, with the application of the Lariat technology. However, we have to keep a few things in mind. Number one, there was a very high, relatively high incidence of maintaining sinus in the ablation only group, and that made it more difficult, more challenging to demonstrate a superiority without enrolling more patients. Secondly, uh, there are, it's without a doubt that there is a the lariat is an effective and durable means of left atrial appendage closure. Thirdly, in those patients in whom the left, atrial, uh, left atrium itself has a higher volume and a volume index, those patients may be the ones who will benefit most from adding a lariat to ablation, uh, given the findings on the AMAZE trial and the linear uh, progression or the horizontal uh, progression of success uh, in the setting of ever-increasing left atrial volumes. Uh, further studies are needed uh, in the truly long-standing persistent AF uh, population. Um, and with that, um, thank you for your attention.